So contrary to popular belief, labeling the Nile as the longest river in the world might be a misconception. The measurement of a river's length entails more than simply calculating the distance between its starting point and end point. Rivers are intricate systems comprised of various tributaries, which significantly impact their overall length. In fact, when accounting for these tributaries, the initial figure can increase up to threefold, exemplified by the Mississippi River. From its origin in Itasca to its conclusion in New Orleans, the measurement suggests one length. However, the inclusion of the Missouri River alters this perception entirely. This discrepancy has fueled ongoing debates regarding the Nile's length compared to that of the Amazon River. Despite Google's recognition of the Nile as the longest river worldwide, it may not fully align with the factual reality. That's a nice way to put it. To comprehend this concept, envision rivers as the veins within a human body. It would be inaccurate to assume that a six-foot-tall individual only has six feet of veins, right? Veins intricately weave throughout the entire body, much like a vast network. Rivers operate under the same principle, and the length of the main river is not the sole consideration. The extensive network of tributaries holds equal importance. Meanwhile, atmospheric rivers are fascinating meteorological occurrences, characterized by air currents that transport incredible amounts of water vapor all the way from the Amazon rainforest in northern South America to as far as northern Argentina. These airborne highways serve as essential conduits for the life-giving moisture carried by these airborne rivers, and their influence extends across Brazil's central west, southeast, and south regions, shaping the waterfall patterns in these areas. When these ethereal rivers converge with specific weather conditions, such as a cold front, the latent humidity they bear can transform into much-needed rainfall. This precipitation plays a vital role not only in sustaining the diverse ecosystems of the region, but also supporting Brazil's thriving economy in multiple ways. The significance of this phenomenon is evident as it enables the irrigation of crops, ensuring agricultural productivity and food security. Additionally, it replenishes local rivers, keeping the water flow steady and supporting aquatic life. Moreover, the water collected by these rivers is channeled into dam reservoirs, providing a reliable source of energy for the nation. The amount of water carried by the airborne rivers may match or even surpass the enormity of the Amazon's flow. Thus, when we unite the conventional Amazon River with its aerial counterpart, it becomes significantly larger than the Nile. Atmospheric rivers are also observed in the Congo Basin, where the climate is predominantly shaped by the moisture emanating from the Atlantic Ocean and the forests of the Congo Basin. This incredible phenomenon leads to evaporation levels as high as 3 to 6 feet of water per year. These rivers vary in size and strength, but on average, they transport a water vapor volume comparable to the flow at the mouth of the Mississippi River. In rare cases, exceptionally powerful atmospheric rivers can carry up to 15 times that amount. When these rivers reach land, they release the accumulated water vapor, resulting in rainfall or snowfall. Although atmospheric rivers come in various forms, those with high water vapor content and intense winds can cause extreme precipitation and flooding, especially when they linger over flood-prone watersheds. An example of a well-known atmospheric river is the Pineapple Express, a robust system capable of transporting moisture from the tropical regions near Hawaii to the U.S. West Coast. Such events can disrupt travel, trigger mudslides, and lead to significant destruction of life and property. However, not all atmospheric rivers pose risks. Many are weaker systems that provide valuable rain or snow, essential for maintaining water supplies. Plus, they play a critical role in the global water cycle and have a close association with water supply and flood hazards, particularly in the western United States. In addition for the potential for flooding, atmospheric rivers also contribute to desirable increases in snowpack. A series of atmospheric rivers was responsible for severe winter storms that battered the U.S. West Coast from western Washington to Southern California between 2010 and just recently in early 2024, resulting in rainfall ranging from 11 to 25 inches in certain regions. So if water vapor can be considered a river, it begs the question, what else can be classified as a river? Surprisingly, even without any water, something can still be deemed a river. This fascinating phenomenon is known as a wadi, traditionally referring to a river valley. Wadis can be found in gently sloping, almost flat areas of deserts. 
Unlike traditional rivers, wadis lack permanent channels due to the sporadic presence of water flow. As a result, they exhibit braided stream patterns caused by limited water supply and an abundance of sediments. The water that does manage to reach the stream bed percolates down, causing a sudden decrease in energy and significant deposition. Additionally, wadis can develop sediment dams, altering stream patterns during subsequent flash floods. Interestingly, wind also plays a role in sediment deposition within wadis. When wadi sediments are submerged or moist, wind-driven sediments settle on top of them, resulting in a mixture of both water and wind sediments. Rivers can be peculiar not just because they consist of sand or air, but also because of their fascinating coverings. In certain conditions, Scotland's River Dee reveals an intriguing sight – peculiar frozen formations that resemble lily pads. These formations, called ice pancakes or pancake ice, occur naturally when gentle waves cause smooth pieces of ice to collide, resulting in smooth rounded edges. As these ice disks interact with the waves, they gain raised edges, giving them an appearance reminiscent of lily pads. Usually, pancake ice has a somewhat slush-like consistency. Some media reports have suggested that the ice on the River Dee formed from frozen foam. But scientists explain that while it is plausible, the pancake ice still develops through the collision process. Over time, these ice pancakes often merge together, forming large sheets of ice. If the ice becomes thick enough and the water remains turbulent, it can bend, fracture, and stack upon itself, creating remarkable structures called ice ridges. Now, imagine a river not made of water but of methane. It may sound like an outlandish idea, but on Saturn's moon Titan, this is actually a reality. Vid Flamina, a fascinating river on Titan, consists of liquid methane and ethane and has drawn comparisons to the mighty Nile. Stretching over 249 miles, it gracefully flows into Ligia Mer, which is Titan's second-largest hydrocarbon sea. While most of Titan's surface is composed of water ice, Vlad Flumia stands out as a breathtaking river that carves canyons into the icy terrain, mimicking solid bedrock. NASA scientists believe that this extraordinary river hosts rapids, whirlpools, and even waterfalls, mirroring the features found in Earth's rivers. When NASA's Cassini probe reached Saturn in 2004, its main goal was to explore this giant planet and its moons. Scientists were particularly interested in finding evidence of liquid methane on Titan due to its unique surface temperature and methane-rich atmosphere. However, initial observations from Cassini concentrated on Titan's equatorial region disappointed the researchers as they found no signs of seas or rivers. But this disappointment turned into excitement when Cassini's orbit shifted, enabling the team to focus on other areas of Titan's surface using radar techniques. Surprisingly, radar signals bounced off various angled and rough features such as sand dunes, cliffs, and rocks. But when the radar reached Titan's polar regions, the signal ceased, revealing mysterious dark spots resembling lakes, rivers, and tributaries akin to those found on Earth. The groundbreaking discovery came in December 2012, when Yanni Radebao, a scientist working with Cassini's team, announced an image captured in September of the same year. The image unveiled a river resembling the Nile, extending over 200 miles in a relatively straight course, indicating a correlation with fault lines similar to other significant rivers nearby. This remarkable flowing body navigates through rugged and inclined terrain, suggesting the occurrence of tectonic processes comparable to those on Earth. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.